um I don't know why but I was really like I need to start with this question <laughs> um Carolina can you talk about the importance of color um in the vessels that you create yes <laughs> I can <laughs> um so there are multiple reasons as to why I chose the color palette that I work with. Um, but the main reason is that it often, whenever I look at um, like historical artifacts from Colombia or um, indigenous artwork from Colombia, or even just quote unquote Latin art, it's very much the same color palette. It's very much like earth tones shades of red or, sorry, it's very loud over here. Um, shades of red, shades of brown, it's all pretty much one note. And so I wanted to represent my culture for how I remember it and for how I experience it with my community here and also my community in Colombia. Um, so I want colors to represent like the vibrancy that I've grown up with and also, um, Growing up as well, I was always just really into vibrant colors, like really, really bright colors. And over time, I started to like dull it down a little bit in, an, in a way of like assimilating to American culture. Um, because here in America, everything for the most part is pretty bleak, very dark, you know, uh, wearing single tone colors is like super fashionable. And so I had that kind of ingrained in my head. And over time I lost, you know, that vibrancy. And so I just wanted to bring it back. And for those colors, you're achieving them, like you're dyeing them yourself, right? Yeah, so um, I use natural materials. So I'll use um, spirulina, cabbage, beets, turmeric, um, basically just anything I can find in my kitchen or in a grocery store, I'll use it and I'll die with it. Mm. Takiya, something I was thinking about with your paintings was also about color and how they express mood. I, mm. I don't know if you would agree, but your paintings feel really moody to me in like a really beautiful way, like in the way that like jazz is moody, you know? Um, especially, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but the really long painting you have, that's the three panels together. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you've interacted with color in your paintings, how you choose what colors you're going to use? Um, I know sometimes with painters that can be a little bit intuitive and it's hard to talk about, so. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Usually I kind of, well, for that color, that painting, I was gonna say like, it is very intuitive, but also, I don't know, kind of just what I feel is like, the right decision, like in that moment. So it's not so much like a calculated plan because I wanted to be very like, you know, honest to like my usual modes of working, but at the same time, it was a challenge because um, I guess it can just look like there's, way too much information where it doesn't seem like it makes sense with each other. So in a way that um, color forces me to slow down in a way. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I found, especially working on like a bigger scale that I like way more calculated and also like establishing a longer relationship with these colors and like really deciding on where they go in the painting and where they go in like this composition. So it becomes something different rather than like me just using the color, but me just like interacting with it mm. and really like, I guess, having that conversation and dialogue, like, is this, does this work? Is this making sense? Is this of use to me? Am I making good use of it? That sort of thing. Mm. Something that you're saying that, and I feel like Carolina kind of ties into what you're saying, there's kind of like a maximalist element to the work, like, either with the vibrancy or you mentioned having a lot of information present. And Fina, I feel like your sculptures also have like a really big maximalist element. Um, one, there's, there's so many layers in the process. So there's kind of a lot of imagery that you're seeing at once. And then also just in the formation of them, there's so many, I, I guess, 
they're not extraneous because they're all part of the piece, but there's so many elements um, to how you're putting it together. Do you feel like that's also kind of about like an abundance of information or how do you feel like you've gotten to that point um, with your work? I definitely think it does come from like a place of like wanting wanting more and wanting the viewer to see more, which is inherently like aligned with maximalism. Um, I think for me, it's um, it comes from a place of like wanting the viewer to have a lot to perceive mm -hmm. and also kind of like for myself in my own process, I really enjoy kind of I making things hard for myself in a way like I, I don't I don't pick um, sometimes like the easiest materials to work with and I want to kind of see how far I can push them sometimes like especially when it comes to like certain like fabric fibers hmm. like I want to see how far that they can kind of like go and what I can do with them outside of the context of the way that they're normally viewed right and can you talk a little bit about some of the materials maybe that you started off working with and what you're working with right now um yeah I um I now work with like mostly soft sculpture and um fibers but in the past um I did a lot of like found object sculptures um I cut up a lot of like tables um and it was kind of always like um like I never saw them as like a means to like an end I would just keep working with them until I felt kind of like satisfied with them and I think that's where um fabric works so well for me because there's such like an abundance of fabric and so many different kinds and so many different things you can do with it that I think it lends itself to the way that I like to do sculpture. Hmm. Kind of pivoting a little bit, um, Layla, I know you're mostly the work that you're presenting in this show are photography and prints that you've been making. And I'm curious, kind of having heard a little bit about how everyone talks about their process, I think you're the only person in this group who's not a fine arts major. And I'm curious what your experience has been developing work, being outside of that major, and if you feel like there is a difference in the way that either you've gotten feedback or you've understood how to like push your work forward and where it's gone. Wow, it is such a, like I could say like so many things. I think. Um, Initially, like when you guys were talking about the uh, maximalist elements in y'all works, I was thinking how like, I feel like for me, my process is so oriented where it's like the presentation visually is a maximalist, but I'm like thinking like a million different thoughts about the concept or the inspirations behind it, or I guess even the arguments that I'm uh, raising or questions that I'm raising for people. Um, so I guess it's kind of maximalist in that route, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, I guess in relations to y'all's work and stuff too, but yeah, I was, I guess I would say as a character of studies major with that in mind, like, I think for me, like, because I'm so interested, even as a character, like, I would love to moving forward, do stuff where it's like really theory based and really like, uh, yeah, theory based, basically, uh, moving forward, like, I don't know. I think that really has been able to like really allow me to just like do the work that I want to do and like yeah in this like comfortable yeah. way with where I'm like not necessarily not necessarily like worrying about like the visual aspect or whatever just like the concept first um and it's been cool too because I think with like like in more specifically not being a fine artist major it's kind of like that expectation of having some type of or I guess it being more visually focused is like not as expected of me like I'll have professors where it's like um they're usually adjuncts and I'm talking to them about my concept and they're like oh I can see how your character studies major blah, blah, blah. and then we'll talk and then it's like they don't really care about the more so visual aspect because they understand mm -hmm. like um but I even though I do consider that but it's like not the real focus for me Right, like people, they're like, oh yeah, like they're emphasizing all the conceptual aspects. 
versus kind of like maybe the materiality, the way like a fine arts major might get a lot of questions about materials. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I would kind of open this up to um, everyone to talk about a little bit of what it is. And it, it, it may feel a little bit like a fish describing water, but what is the process of making artwork as a student within an institution? I mean, there's obviously the kind of particular struggles with the last year, um, and I'm sure that's colored your experience as well. So I would also be interested in hearing that. But, um, you know, I think people go to art school or people don't go to art school, but when you're in it, you're so in it. And when you're out, you know, I don't know what happens when you go out, you kind of black out or something, but being in it now, <laughs> I, and um, I open that up to everyone, but I would actually want Takia to talk about that a little bit first, because I know your work in particular really is about that um, institutional context as an artist. Mm. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so I think I'm going to say like one of the first things that popped up to my head when you asked the question was that um, not sure how this is going to be framed, but it seems it's like a constant uh, like uh, pushback, I would say, because there is like, you know, I have my one, I'm like my own individual. So there's autonomy there. And then two, there's this, but working with that autonomy in like this, you know, constant cycle, I would say, or operation, it, it you have your like moments of vibration and um, I allow my, I guess, resistance or like uh, apprehension to that be very like, you know, honest and not trick myself into thinking, oh, okay, never mind. I'm supposed to, you know, go with the tides like all the time. Mm -hmm. So it helps me really like, I guess, stay focused and like, you know, and not like get off my game and make work that I'm actually like, you know, serves purpose to me. Mm -hmm. And within an institution and a system, it's always just this like, you know, I, I say this all the time, like not so much just the institution, we say that, but also I see it as metaphors and like mm -hmm. conversations and dynamics mm -hmm. and critiques and scenarios, just anything possible. Um, how I'm perceived as a student to someone who doesn't know me or a professor and like how that is interpreted, um, that dynamic is always like present. It's always gonna be present, especially that I'm a black student in a PWI. And that's gonna continue outside of a PWI because it's like a bubble within a bubble within a bubble, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to like keep that like core up but I find it I guess for me it comes a little uh not easy because there are some tough times but I don't ever become regretful of the experience that way even if it is very tough and like a constant struggle or fight against some sort of force mm -hmm. yeah I guess you're never losing yourself in that process Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, kind of going off of what Takia said, it's really easy in an institution to get pushed in a certain direction, mm -hmm. like, and to inherently just kind of lose sight of what you kind of went there for and like what you want to make art about because there's so much like influence there's so many like people around you there's so many like professors telling you things and it's really easy to get like I feel I guess separately a little bit from Takia I feel like it gets a little overwhelming at times and you can find yourself like put in a situation where you're like I'm actually making artwork about something that I'm not as comfortable with or maybe I don't want to make this right now mm -hmm. and you just feel like you got like kind of like pigeonholed into like a scenario or situation where you have to make artwork about something and you don't have to go into 
personal details, but can you talk a little bit like what, when you say pigeonholing for someone who might be listening and say like, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. I think that might be experience, might be my experience. Um, like you might like reveal a detail or something about like a project that you made and then someone will like hone in on that and say that you should make more artwork about that. And it's like, that's not what this was about. I didn't want to make artwork about this. It was just like one factor in, I kind of let it slip out. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. I, I guess like what I want to say is that I initially went to art school to learn different modes of art making for my own, like, you know, for myself. But I came to realize that like, the more I'm entrenched in this institution, it's more about me teaching others than it actually is about me learning from others. Um, and most of the time, it's me having to over explain myself and exhaust myself to a point where I don't even want to make this artwork that I'm making now because I have to constantly justify it to a generally uh, white audience. And that's where it gets kind of tricky because then I have to watch what I say or get like watch how much information I provide about the artwork um mm -hmm. or, like Fina and Le and uh Takia said like you kind of get placed into this this box like this is a person that makes this specific artwork and now we're just going to focus on that specific work rather than focusing on all aspects of the work and so that's just like what my experience has been, um, yeah. Yeah, and I will also say too, like, I feel like, I don't know how it is for other art schools, of course, but I feel like more has this thing where they aren't, they, it seems like they haven't made up their mind about if they, as an institution, want to like encourage students to really like develop their own craft, or if like, you're supposed to have this like developed craft or this developed artistry, like by the time you graduate, like, mm -hmm. and I think that's the thing that I've been realizing that really makes me have these weird and like um, self-deprecating uh, relationships with my work. Cause it's like some, a lot of times, and I think in general, like with critiques, like, uh alone like there's this like mm. insinuation that there's like you're presenting this work and it's like this presentation of your work and that's like the final aspect of it when it's like mm. there can be continuations of things this doesn't have to be this like standalone thing that represents you as an artist and who you're going to be forever like I don't know it seems like in a lot of conversations that I'm having with like professors about like my art making and stuff like the work that I'm doing now is supposed to like determine the work that I'm going to do for the rest of my life and stuff when it's like that doesn't have to be the point like mm -hmm. I can like make stuff now and have a completely different trajectory like in the rest of my life but it doesn't feel like that and like even my one I have one professor now where it's like he wants us to post everything we create on social media every like on a weekly basis where it's like First of all, sharing content publicly doesn't have to be like the focus or like the <laughs> the um like centerfold of like what your work is about. Like it doesn't have to be on the internet for it to be a work. But then also it's like I what if someone doesn't have a relationship with their work where they want to share like publicly everything and that be like a representative like thing of their self? Like I don't know. That's the thing I think like when it comes to like representation and like uh the I guess temporalness of works I feel like it's not weird mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Layla when you say like in critiques that's where it kind of just becomes a mess I feel that especially when you're presenting um a body of work that is completely different from something else whether it be in concept or material the question is always how do the works relate to each other how do you create a more cohesive body of work? And it's like, because even if the materials or the color palettes are completely different, the concept or the concepts are still very similar, at least. Right, um, right. And that's, you know, that's always a problem. Like, why are you working with clay and not strictly corn husks? Yes. 
both. Oh my like, goodness. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. Like I'm here to experiment and that's, you know, like working with one material, I'm not going to do that for the rest of my career or the rest of my life. It's for, you know, I'm there to enjoy it. I think it's very much so a branding thing where they wanted to, they want to do something where it's like create these students or create these artists that are like marketable, basically, where it's like they do this thing when it's like we don't have to put a, a stamp on like what we do as creatives, especially not at this age, like. Mm -hmm. yeah no, like I I, oh go ahead go ahead no you're fine oh um I feel like with the especially with like the senior like thesis show coming up it really just shows like how much it's kind of like they work like from like you start as freshmen and I feel like you're just building up to this show and they want you to create a cohesive body of work for this show. And they're gonna do everything that they can to kind of push you in that direction. Like, I know specifically for fine arts, they say a lot like, don't try something new for your senior thesis show. What? I'm, whoa, okay. Yeah, they'll say don't try a new medium, stuff. like specifically. And I'm like, that's to some degree, like, yes, you're going to run into frustrations when you try a new medium in a limited amount of like time. But are you going to like actively discourage people from like being creative and doing what they want to do? Like, and I feel like it just feels weird like, and wrong. Yeah. And hmm, oftentimes I feel like there's just not enough listening to the students and the artists it's like it doesn't take much to just pause and just hear what the mm. student artist is presenting to you and what information they're saying and how they say it and whatever it's always um and also it's set up where like Layla was saying like a brand and also what Caroline was talking about in critiques they use language where um you're at like um odds with everyone else like you have to mm. defend your work mm. you have to prove yourself and like explain and give this information that makes sense to them or where they can abstract it and be like okay I get it but I feel like oftentimes there's just a choice to not listen and also a choice to not you know process the information you know in the way that it's intended by the artist and all and just looking at the work there's not enough looking at the work as is in a conversation to what they're conceptually saying. And also, um, I was gonna say something about the trying new medium, which is really ridiculous because I think there's like this hesitation or like what we scared for of like revealing the process. Like, I don't understand what's this like <laughs> hesitation oh, yeah. to like, see the infrastructure of whatever it is that you're making you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. what's wrong with seeing the seams of whatever is being constructed together you know what I mean so it's almost like this fake honesty mm -hmm. that they have with it where it's not genuine and when you express that there's this element of surprise like whoa 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 and then with that, it becomes a whole nother dynamic on how you're basically perceived based throughout your entire or the rest of your art career. Mm. I have more. Because <laughs> it. it can change. I'm not trying to make it bleak. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear you all talk about this because I think that, you know, there's a, there's, there was an understanding of what being an artist meant professionally. And obviously whatever that was 20, 30, maybe even 10, but what it was, it's changed a lot. And they, I think, you know, institutions notoriously are kind of slow to change, but I'm really encouraged by you all being very thoughtful about what it is that's not working. Um, because I think that shows that you are attuned to what is actually happening. And then that's going to just reverberate and, you know, in an institutional context, maybe that'll happen a little bit more slowly, but, you know, outside of it, 
or like, you know, in conversations like these, like the potential for people to hear it and for it to be either a confirmation or a revelation. Um, that's like so exciting. And um, as you're all talking, I can't remember exactly where I read this, um, but I read something that talked about how you, as an artist, you can't create and critique at the same time. And I think um, typically in art school, um, you are asked to do just that, to create and to be a critic um, at the same time. Um, and so I, I, I do kind of wanna like now kind of shift that conversation a little bit and let's get out of like critique mode. And I wanna open this up to kind of, let's find like a new way to talk about the work. So I, I one of the reasons why you all were selected to kind of be in the show together um, it's because you all were making kind of really dynamic work about self in one way or another. Um, and the show I decided to name Anger Not as, for kind of a number of reasons. Um, and I feel like, you know, obviously there, there's some like anger related things that kind of like came up in our conversation, but also, um, you know, Anger Not the way that there's kind of like misconceptions about what actually is the emotional place people are coming from when they create their work. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit of like how you're viewing your work personally, emotionally, you know, spiritually, whatever it is. Um, and I'll actually point that to Layla first, because I um, think your zine homecoming really kind of is like so full of spirit. <laughs> Um, and I also want to point it out because I think um, the level of vulnerability you have in that particular piece, I think is rare, um, or it might be something people want to do, but feel like they can't for whatever reason. Um, so would you be willing to kind of talk a little bit about that piece and how you were able to get to the point of developing it? Yeah, um, I think, for the past couple of semesters before uh, doing that homecoming zine, uh, I was having like, as we were talking about before, like these like really intensely uh, anger filled relations and dynamics with the institution I was in. Like, I feel like there was just like this veil, like removed from like the perception I had of more coming into the school versus like dealing with like this mundane, uh, forms of oppression in different ways as a black student, but also as a student in general, like I feel like there's just this dynamic that is just like mundanely uh, traumatic really. Um, and so I was thinking about that, but also just uh, relations to um, like dynamics and relations that happen outside of uh, the educational institution uh, that are like institutions themselves, like, and I think this is also just was me being like in classes, learning stuff and being like, yeah, fuck this, woo, woo. Um, but anyway, I had basically a lot of raw emotion and I, what I wanted to do first as like a person that loves curation was like ask questions to other people, like talk to other people about it and create works that were uh, interpersonal at, at its core. Um, like doing works where it was like having a phrase or a question that really encourages people to ask the same thing. But I, I think um, Homecoming was the first piece that I did where I was really asking myself questions mm. about my anger and about uh, my relationship with uh, the institutions and the uh, social constructs and things, whatever have you that I'm like a part of and basically asking myself how to unroot myself for them or at least have a relationship with them where I'm not constantly angry um, and I can uh, establish like a boundary from them to where I'm liberated. So uh, I did that. And it's also a thing too of like, I think in general, it was really just a helpful process to like streamline and uh, synthesize my the million thoughts and questions that I have into one thing so that I can really come to some type of resolution. Um, so yeah, I think for me, it was like immensely healing in that right, but also it gave me clarity, which I think is like really crucial and helpful because it's like you like when it comes to anger, for example, like there's so much uh, uncertainty and like, I guess, like 
not lack of understanding there's like a lack of understanding that I think is like really present and like being able to have a resolution basically allows you to still be angry but have it in a way where you can like I guess I don't know direct it in ways where it's like productive and liberating I really love what you said I'm kind of like reading into what you said a little bit like um like talking about vulnerability and um the interpersonal and that just kind of clicked for something into my head that like vulnerability is being interpersonal like those are the same thing um and that makes me think about um Fina thinking about your pieces um the one in particular the cape that has scans of your friends I know at least one there might be more faces it's a little bit hard to tell the distortion and then also knowing that um, you know you've made work that's referenced your partner, and that you have like really beautiful photographs that are taken by someone else. Um, have you found that like how interpersonality? I don't know if interpersonality is a word, but how that plays into like the work that you're developing. Um, I actually, to clarify, the Kate piece is old photos of me. They're just really, really old. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, there, oh, the photos of you on the cape. There are photos of me on the cape oh, and I'm modeling. Look very different. But I think I just look very different <laughs> throughout uh, periods of time. And I think that's also why I kind of gravitated towards that imagery. It was from photos of me my, my freshman year uh, at Moore. And so for kind of like my senior thesis, it, it felt like it made sense to go back to that imagery of myself because I felt like I viewed myself very differently back then and kind of um, in a way dealing with those images had me deal with a weird like connection to myself and feeling like I had changed a lot as a person also. But going back to kind of what you were saying about um, vulnerability and um, how it's very like interpersonal I think that really I think that hits home in like the way that the only way that you can be vulnerable is to kind of show yourself to others mm -hmm. and kind of like express how you're feeling and I do think it can come from a lot of like different places and I think in some cases for me being vulnerable for people was allowing, like around people was allowing them to see me upset and mm. for them to see me in different ways that weren't just the way that I wanted to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes back to kind of um, how a lot of my pieces in the past have involved um, my relationship with the world around me, but also the people that I choose to kind of keep around me. Mm. Um, and how um, I'm thinking back to like the pillow piece, how it said, um, like it, it expresses like a very, like what used to be a close relationship and kind of like reflecting back on that and how it, to me, when I look on it now, it's like, oh, I don't, like a lot of people have expressed to me that it feels very like sad and things like that to them. But to me, it really just represents kind of like a period in time and how I can be vulnerable to someone and how it can not work out and everything. Like I can just look back on it. It can be a passing thought that just kind of sits there like a throw pillow. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah. You know yeah. what you said um sorry i was just gonna quickly say um uh, it reminds me of i've been reading uh pleasure activism um, yeah. and then one of the like excerpted uh, essays someone mentioned how like there's a phrase that's like pretty common like hurt people hurt people but uh conversely uh like they said like healing people heal people as well and i feel like through works that like present that like you're encouraging like dialogue in itself where it's like steps to healing but also just like awareness at the base level you know what I mean yeah I think when I first presented that piece a lot of people like said that it made them feel sad and it felt so like 
abstract to me because I felt so removed from the situation like looking back on it I was like oh well I'm I'm obviously like over this (laughs) and it was really weird to like hear that like it then like brought up the kinds of feelings that I felt when I was making the piece in people yeah that like kind of work be referencing the past and making that present but they're like they're separate but they're the same at the same time and that's kind of like a tension for some people I feel like it comes back to what you were saying a little bit before like in the in the moment I don't remember how you phrased it but like in the moment it's really hard to think about how you can look back at the work Hmm. so like in the moment I made that work with those feelings and then like afterwards like now I can see it but in the moment it didn't make sense (laughs) Uh, I'm curious Caroline if some of the things that Fina just mentioned I feel like have some overlap with your practice or particularly the um, video pieces that you show um, in this show did you find any connection in that way yeah, I I definitely think that I am so far removed from what has happened to me in the past that looking back at it now, it doesn't bring up the same feelings or the same like uh like mental anguish that it used to. And I also like throughout this whole conversation, I realized that I got to the materials and the concepts and the things that I've been working on because I had been living like so removed from what I'm actually working on. Like growing up undocumented in a almost only like Latin Hispanic community, you feel part of that community. But once you are encouraged to assimilate to American culture um, and you are part of that American culture, you know, or they tell you that you're part of that American culture, then you're removed from both cultures and now you're just standing Mm. in front of two like separate identities. And for me, it's always been like, my mom always told me, you can't tell anyone you're undocumented. So even my closest friends didn't know I was undocumented, but you know, we're always like chatting. Like I was always going over their houses. You know, we were sharing the same foods, the same cultures, but yet I never felt part of that. And it was, until I moved to Pennsylvania that I was so far removed from everything that I that I knew and recognized that I was able to look back on it and see that this is not what my identity is this is not what culture is and that's where I started the slow process of undoing what I thought culture was what I thought um, Latina was and also how I experience culture, how I experience community. And community was something that was a big part of this because we always talk about like the Latin community, the Asian community, but there are so many sub communities within that. And also like having to classify a community by your ethnicity is so problematic for me that <laughs> Like I had to undo all of those things. And that's how I came to uh, working with corn husks. Cause I'm like, all right, what's common ground? Corn, let's like do corn stuff. And one of my favorite comfort foods is arepa which is primarily corn. And I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do because it's what I knew what was familiar but also comforting and in a way that nothing else was. And so like seeing myself in this material and seeing what I think community is in this material is why I like keep going, you know, like that's why I keep exploring different ways of making or like, you know, different materials that express the same thing. Mm. It's so beautiful to hear how much like when you all are talking about your work, there's so much purpose behind it. Um, 
and you know there's all different types of art in the world but I find it particularly admirable um, and touching to hear about artists who have like deep personal purpose behind what they do because that's what translates you know decades no matter what it is that you're doing um having that like core um so just want to point that out um we're starting to wrap up and uh, the question that i want to ask all of you so i want you all to get a chance to answer it um is how has being part in this show together changed the way that you viewed yourself as an artist um whether that just be the process of you know, we had our studio visit, seeing all of the work together, having whatever kind of interactions you may have had on Instagram. Um, and if it hasn't changed you as an artist, you can say that that's totally fine. But I'm curious if it has shifted anything or if, it, if it's made you realize anything about yourself as an artist. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know if I was gonna talk before. Um, I would say, actually like in retrospect, I learned that, you know, it's hard to, I think we were talking about this before, hard to really look at your work in retrospect and really like kind of almost separate from you because it's very easy to have this really like attached and also like identify, like this is what identifies me, which is not always permanence you know it can always change so I um, enjoyed seeing my work and talking about this work in context with other artists that are in this show and also through this process because I realized you know I, I think I like the or I'm fascinated with the idea of like really stepping out of I guess myself or like getting out of the mode of like whether it be school or like that mode of making and you know what you're used to mm -hmm. um it felt like a pause almost and um and just really like kind of taking a moment and really just engaging with it but in a way that's productive and you analyze it in a way that's like like we were saying with purpose and like it did serve you purpose at that time and purposes can change. Yeah, I felt like that was pretty cool. Like, cause always when you're making, you're in it, you're in it, but never like outside of it. Mm -hmm. um, I will say for me, I think this whole process has been such a strong like affirmation and like uh, mm -hmm. a good just like reminder of like why I do what I do and like what why I want to continue doing what I do like I think for me this semester I was just having crazy artist block and like um mm -hmm. considering honestly not really being a maker after graduating that much but like getting responses from people and also just like after this conversation too like it's making me just strongly think like yeah this is what I'm doing this for and this is like the thing that fills me up as a like human being not even as a creator yeah uh, and then I will also say too this whole experience has been such a really nice uh introduction or not necessarily introduction but it's been such a nice example of ways that we can create spaces and uh exhibitions outside of like this like um violent colonialist context like this mm. has been a mad freeing experience and like I'm realizing that like as an artist as a curator um in like the art world in general like we can always be having spaces like this and experiences like this mm. um it doesn't have to be this thing where we're just like doing stuff I mean like how more advertises <laughs> to like for the means of production or whatever yeah. like it could just be for the sake of like yeah. soul serving which is like really yeah. great to know and remember yeah without having to prove like making work without yeah. having to prove something to something else yeah. you know mm. um yeah i think going off of like what you both have said um i think for me it it was also very affirming in a certain way like I, I think I came to terms with making artwork for myself and I was very like 
comfortable producing artwork for myself but it was very nice to kind of have this experience and like know that people can get something from my work and that through like the process of me healing and showing that in my work that people were also able to get that out of it um and kind of relaying the last um sentiment I always find it very nice to work with people like Logan who are uh, very accommodating towards like physical and other kind of like disabilities because I've had a lot of opportunities in the past where things have fallen through because people couldn't work around those kinds of things and it's just nice to have like an opportunity where I didn't have to worry about that um for me it's it's like reassuring to know that there are spaces where I don't have to basically give a lecture about my work in order for it to be appreciated and I found that you know people I didn't even know were um like posting my work on social media and appreciating it in a way that my work hasn't been appreciated before. So it was like, it was really like awesome to see that and to like know that I don't have to give this explanation. I don't have to answer any questions about my work. People can just appreciate it and how they appreciate it is up to them because my work is not just for me, but it's it's a work that speaks for itself, that exists by itself. And so to see other people appreciate them for what they are, that's all I could ask for really. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you say that to thank you. Yes. To like, you know, grant this to us. And it's very, very, very much appreciated. And thank you all. Yeah. This is like yeah, the best oh experience I've shared so far. <laughs> yeah, and I'll also say too, like, I mean, I don't know. Like one of the things I've been reflecting on is just like how, like, even though you're a part of an institution, like the community that comes from it is like a completely different like thing mm-hmm. that like you can get so much like love oh, yeah. from basically. And yeah. like I'm extremely grateful to be a part of like the more <laughs> no! it's terrible to say but it's it's kind of true like that's probably yeah, like yeah. the best thing I got out of more yeah the people the, the, people the best part yeah. yeah that's what I was saying about like you know making the experience not regretful in the end yeah. you know yeah. so like that's where it counts and that's I guess where it's super important to really like hone in and see mm. those yeah. moments that contribute to that contribute to an experience that you can still pull from like this is what I appreciated and learned from this (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah I mean thank you all so much like you know for anyone who curates or organizes, like you can only do what the people around you are kind of like explicitly or implicitly like telling you needs to be done so I you know like whatever positive experience you may be having it is because like somehow that has been expressed that like this is what's needed um so I mean thank you all for kind of expressing that and helping this kind of happen in a way that hopefully more people are seeing and more comes out of it and um I, I also want to give like a quick shout out to um, PS Exhibitions, which is also run by a more alum um, and has been showing like some, a couple of more alum as well recently. And they've also been doing like really awesome stuff. So I, I, it feels great to be like in community with that as well. Um, I never know how to end these conversations. <laughs> um usually because I just kind of like artist sparks by snail and... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah maybe I need to come up with some kind of like ending pitch but um <laughs> yeah thank you all so much um and uh I'm going to hit stop record right now <laughs> <laughs>